Have you ever examined whether we're really alone in the universe? Then again, assuming there's something more to our world than what we see, envision a situation in which the James Webb Telescope finally exhibits that we live inside a black hole. Join us as we explore this groundbreaking news that will make you question everything you thought you understood about the universe. So, what exactly are black holes? They're like something out of a terrible dream. Sure, you might have seen them in sci-fi movies, but they're much more startling. As shown by specialists, black holes in space are considered enormous amounts of matter compressed into an exceptionally small region. Imagine a star many times more massive than the sun squeezed into a circle the size of New York City. The gravitational pull is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. Analysts have been fascinated by black holes for quite some time, considering them as objects so tremendous and dense that they can trap light. The most well-known ideas about black holes were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Essentially, when an immense star reaches the end of its life, it leaves behind a dense core. If this core's mass is many times that of the sun, gravity overwhelms everything, leading to the creation of a black hole. Recognizing black holes is no easy task because they emit no light. However, analysts have found ways to deduce their presence by observing their influence on nearby matter. For instance, if a black hole moves through interstellar matter, it pulls that matter toward it in a process called accretion. Moreover, when a normal star gets too close to a black hole, it can be destroyed, emitting X-rays as it does so. Black holes also massively affect their surroundings. They can consume nearby stars, emit powerful gas blasts, and influence the formation of new stars, sometimes encouraging it in certain regions while slowing it down in others. But where do black holes come from? Imagine stars, once massive and exploding, meeting their ultimate doom in a stunning event called a supernova. From the remains of these fallen giants, black holes emerge. Most black holes are born from massive stars that reach their celestial retirement in a supernova blast. Smaller stars, when they die, transform into neutron stars, extremely dense objects but not dense enough to trap light. However, if a star is several times the mass of our sun, it collapses under its own gravitational force, forming a black hole. As these collapses occur, something strange happens near their surfaces. Time itself starts to behave differently. From the perspective of someone far away, time appears to slow down near the event horizon, the last point of no return for anything falling into a black hole. It's as if the clock near the black hole ticks at a different speed compared to ours. Occasionally, when two smaller black holes collide, they merge to form a larger and more terrifying black hole. Similarly, if a black hole interacts with a neutron star, they can create a colossal phenomenon beyond comprehension. Scientists have been grappling with the scale of these phenomena for quite some time. Black holes come in two sizes, big and small. However, small is a relative term. Gigantic black holes, remnants of monstrous stars, can be ten to multiple times the size of the sun. There could be ten million to a billion black holes in the Milky Way alone, capable of swallowing anything in their path. Even more enormous are the supermassive black holes, which are millions or billions of times the size of the Sun and exist at the centers of giant galaxies, including our own Milky Way. These massive voids pull everything toward them. The famous physicist Stephen Hawking spent much of his life studying black holes, offering many insights. While some of his theories couldn't be confirmed due to a lack of advanced equipment, there is now hope on the horizon with a single scientific instrument making a huge difference, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. This engineering marvel represents the pinnacle of human ingenuity. Although we've launched other space telescopes before, the JWST surpasses them all, making the Hubble Telescope, which served us faithfully for years, look like a simple speck in the vast universe. The JWST's price tag is an astounding $10 billion, a cost that reflects decades of collaboration among NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency, alongside contributions from over 300 universities. The risks of this ambitious project are not for the faint-hearted. The JWST is venturing into uncharted territory, 
pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and taking us to places we've only imagined. After its successful launch, NASA announced that the telescope has enough fuel to last more than twice its baseline mission life. Since its deployment, the JWST has achieved extraordinary feats. It traveled over one million miles to reach its orbit around the Sun, where it will remain indefinitely. During its journey, it successfully deployed its massive five-layer sunshield and giant primary mirror, both of which had to be folded to fit into the launch vehicle. One of the JWST's most fascinating moments was when NASA announced its capture of the first images of starlight. The telescope's first image was of a star called HD 84406, resulting in a mosaic of 18 scattered bright spots created by the 18 mirror segments on its primary mirror. Later, NASA released another image where the 18 copies of the star were combined into a purposeful hexagonal arrangement. Once the observatory aligned and calibrated the individual segments, it began merging these images into one clear view. Thanks to its advanced technology, the JWST will help researchers study the early stages of the universe after the Big Bang, focusing on the era following the formation of the first stars, known as the Epoch of Reionization. During this time, neutral hydrogen became reionized, regaining an electric charge due to radiation from the first stars. The JWST's ability to look billions of years into the past makes this possible. Additionally, the telescope will aid in discovering exoplanets, which are difficult to identify due to their interactions with their host stars. Its powerful sensors will allow scientists to study these planets in greater detail, including imaging their atmospheres. Understanding the atmospheres and conditions of these planets could provide insights into their habitability and help scientists better predict the nature of distant worlds. Whether certain planets are habitable or not, besides studying the formation of planets, scientists are studying galaxies to understand how matter is organized on a large scale. This, in turn, allows us to see how the universe evolved, how the spiral and elliptical galaxies we see today developed from different shapes over billions of years. One of the JWST's goals is to look back at the earliest galaxies to better understand that evolution. Researchers are also trying to figure out how we got the range of galaxies that are visible today and how galaxies continue to form and evolve. Anyway, most significantly, the James Webb Space Telescope will help us answer the biggest questions of all. Are we alone in the universe, and are we living inside a black hole? The JWST has already been on the hunt, and guess what it found? Compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, hiding around those enormous supermassive black holes in three active galaxies. These carbon-based molecules with ring-like structures are like the goth kids of the universe. They're everywhere, from distant galaxies to comets, and even in our solar system. They're not just intriguing because they could be the building blocks of life, but also because they help astronomers track star formation. When ultraviolet radiation hits these PAHs, they glow and emit infrared light, a signal that can be detected by the JWST's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI. This is typically a sign that there are some hot, young stars nearby. But wait for the twist. A curious astrophysicist, Ismael Garcia Bernard from Oxford University decided to investigate three active galaxies known as NGC 6552, NGC 70319, and the famous Stefan's Quintet, located millions of light years away in the depths of darkness. What Garcia Bernard found will make your hair stand on end. In those central regions where the black holes dominate, he found a ton of PAHs. Sounds great, right? Well, here's where it gets chilling. The radiation near those supermassive black holes distorted the PAHs, essentially transforming them into larger, electrically neutral versions of themselves. The smaller, electrically charged PAHs vanished into the void. Imagine being consumed by the darkness itself. But wait, there's a glimmer of hope, or maybe not. The real question here isn't whether we're alive, but whether we truly exist. Does everything around us exist because of the black hole we're in? Everything integrates with the theory that maybe we're not just living inside a black hole but rather inside the event horizon, a line between the universe we know and the unknown. Could it be that everything is connected within a black hole? 
the James Webb Space Telescope is out there right now, searching for the answers to the unknown. Stay tuned and maybe, just maybe, it will make all of us rethink what we thought we knew about existence. The truth might be far more twisted than we realize. In the fascinating world of astrophysics, few topics have generated as much intrigue and mystery as black holes. These cosmic entities, with their ability to warp space-time and consume everything in their vicinity, have long been the subject of both scientific study and popular imagination. The statement, we finally found what's inside a black hole, made by renowned physicist Michio Kaku, taps into the awe and curiosity surrounding these enigmatic objects. But what does Kaku mean by this bold assertion? Has science finally unlocked the secrets of what lies within the event horizon of a black hole? To understand Kaku's statement, we need to take a step back and explore the nature of black holes, the current state of research, and the significance of the latest discoveries in the field. A black hole is an area in space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape. This phenomenon is the result of a massive star collapsing under its own gravity after it has exhausted its nuclear fuel. When this happens, the star's core contracts, and if the mass is great enough, it forms a singularity, a point of infinite density where the laws of physics as we know them break down. Surrounding this singularity is the event horizon, which marks the boundary beyond which nothing can escape, not even light. For centuries, the existence of black holes was purely theoretical. The concept first emerged from Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, but it wasn't until the 1960s and 1970s that scientists like John Wheeler, Roger Penrose, and Stephen Hawking began to develop the mathematical framework that brought black holes into the realm of accepted science. However, even with this theoretical understanding, black holes remained a subject of speculation and mystery. What happens beyond the event horizon? Is it possible to peer into the interior of a black hole, or is it completely inaccessible? The event horizon of a black hole represents a boundary that, once crossed, offers no turning back. It is often described as the point of no return. Once something passes this threshold, it is drawn inexorably toward the singularity at the center of the black hole, where it is crushed to infinite density. Despite their importance in the black hole model, the event horizon is not something we can directly observe. In fact, the very definition of a black hole comes from the fact that light cannot escape its gravitational pull. This has made the study of what lies beyond the event horizon exceptionally challenging. Historically, black holes were thought of as cosmic prisons, where information about the objects falling into them would be lost forever. This idea was encapsulated by the so-called information paradox, which arose from the work of Stephen Hawking in the 1970s. Hawking proposed that black holes could slowly evaporate due to a process known as Hawking radiation, a quantum phenomenon that suggests black holes slowly lose mass over time. If this radiation carried away all the information about what had fallen into the black hole, it would violate a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics known as unitarity, which states that information must be preserved. This paradox sparked decades of debate, with some, 